Creating, prototyping, and styling apps takes a lot of time. And I thought in this video, I'd show you my process of how I prototype and how I style apps when I'm creating them. So I have a app right here. It doesn't look too great. It has no styling whatsoever. It's a fitness tracker app. And uh, what I wanna show you guys is how I apply my styles to this. Now, this app right here, what it does is you can enter in data for the breakfast, lunch, and dinner you have. You can put in the calories, you can submit them. They're actually saved in a database in the back end. You can retrieve them, you can delete the information from it. Now, anytime I quickly create prototypes, even all the way from prototypes to production, I like to use Tailwind as my front end CSS utility class library. It's just so simple to add those HTML elements on there. And then for the back end, I use AWS Amplify Gen 2. And if you go to docs.amplify.aws, you click get started, and then it goes to this docs page and you click get started again. You'll see three or four different ways to get started. For this one, I created it using Next.js with server components. Although you can use this with Nuxt and other frameworks, but in this case, I'll just use Next. And then I just followed the guidelines here. So it just gives you kind of step by step. Now to create the, the Amplify side, I ran this command, npm create Amplify at latest. And that created this folder here. If I go to Amplify, I have this auth folder. And this, when just all these lines of code, all it did is it creates this backend provider, identity provider for me. And then on the, on the database side, and I created one, a model, a schema called meal. And then inside that meal, I have a meal name, which can be either breakfast, lunch, dinner, or snack. I have a food, which is a string, which is required, have calories and data, and then only authorized people, basically only people who are logged in can make changes to this, but everybody can read it. So just with a few lines of code, this will automatically create a full stack backend for us. I just followed the rest of the guidelines here. I ran this MPX Amplify Sandbox that creates an ephemeral environment so I can test locally. So I think this is a great way to get up and running on your project. It literally took me about maybe 10 minutes to just write this in. Most of this is scaffolded out for me. And probably the longest time it took was just to uh, run a command in my command line, which automatically created all the environments. And that just took a few minutes. So I thought it'd be fun today to take a look at this kind of unstyled app that we have and then style it. And if we go back to our page.tsx file, I'm using the Amplify library here to do a call to the back end. This is on a server component. So I have this cookie based client here and this cookie based client. This was actually directly, I just copy and paid this directly from that getting started guide. And this allows you to make calls on server components to that backend database. I'm using server actions here. So I'm saying, hey, go ahead and create this new record with calories, food, data, and meal name, and then also have an easy way to delete as well. And I'll, like I said, I'll put the code below so you can follow along. And then I also have that as soon as this component loads, it just grabs all the data and just today's date and it displays it on the screen. Well, it essentially grab it so we can have these values filled out. But this is really ugly. And so when I'm quickly scaffolding things out, I like to use Tailwind. So for these first class names, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put padding a four and I'm gonna make flex, flex column, item center, and a gap of six. If I do that, okay, it's already looking a little bit better. It's all in one big column. So let me make sure, make sure I actually had a typo there, flex. Okay, so now it's sort of, in the right columns. None of these components are styled, but I don't know, I'm looking a little better. My banner that says my super amazing fitness app. Let's add a little bit of styles to that too. I don't know, we'll make it text, 3XL. I'm gonna have a nice yellow background to it. Let's do 200. I'll make it rounded, I don't know, large, and we'll do padding a four. All right, so now I have a little bit of nicer banner. I mean, it's nothing too special, but I think it looks a little bit better than it did before. And for the rest of this, I have this date right here. I probably wanna add a little bit of more to this. I'll do, I'll make it large text and italic, italic. Okay, yeah, okay, it looks a little bit nicer. You know, it's not perfect. Now for these sections, I have inputs. I have a couple of inputs, I have a button, Let's see what they look like. I'm gonna go into this meal. And in this component is I'm passing in those server actions from the page component, this on delete action and create. And also I'm passing like the data that's already in the database. That's what this current meal is. So if we come back down here, this current meal is essentially we do a, 
a call to the back end to grab all the data for just for today and then we pass it into this component. So it's nothing too complicated. I think it's pretty straightforward. I'm using TypeScript, so I'm adding all the types in here. I have some use dates. So if we scroll all the way to the bottom, I have some sections, some forms. So first, I want a width for this. So I'm gonna put one, I don't know, one fourth width. Okay, that's way too small. Maybe I'll do three fourths. Okay, and since I, Typically when I'm just prototyping things out, I don't deal too much with, with mobile responsiveness, but if I could, I could definitely use some small or medium breakpoints and then set them up so maybe it kind of shrinks or enlarges. If we have time at the end of this video, maybe I'll add a few responsive parts to this, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it like this. This form has uh, a current meal, so this will show if someone has added some information for this meal, it'll show here and you allow it allow you to delete it. We also then have a hidden input to grab the meal name, some labels and text areas for the inputs. If we look at the form itself, everything is underneath this. Once again, we'll use flex, flex column. I'll put a little border around it, a little bit of padding, rounded, and then gap four. Now, for those of you watching along, you're probably thinking, why don't you use grid here? I just like flex. If this was a more complicated type of app and I had maybe multiple columns. I probably use grid, but I just like flex, so I'm gonna use it for this one. All right, because we're getting a little bit closer now. I think it looks a little nicer, especially on this screen size here. I got breakfast, estimated calories. So now I want to show something here. So if I enter some data in here, let's say I have a breakfast for, and I had a sandwich, and I put in 300 calories, I submit it. Now I have the submitted and deleted entry, kind of looks ugly, so let's see if we can make that look a little nicer. And I'll do flex, gap four, justify, end. I really like the IntelliSense. I have that IntelliSense plugin for VS Code, makes this easier. And item center, you can't, it feels like anytime you're dealing with flex, you always I justify content and line items. That's what you always use, and that's what I like to use. And then for this class name, we'll put a big red text. I don't know, we'll make it 400. We'll do text large. So let's see what this looks like. Okay, all right, so now I kind of like this a little better. It moves it to the end, because I did justify end here. It doesn't look like a button though. Now if you looked at my previous video, I talked about how you can reuse uh, styles in Tailwind and that oftentimes you don't want to re-abstract all those out. It's okay to repeat yourself. So in this video, I'm not going to abstract anything out. I'm just gonna repeat myself for any of these classes. Even though the buttons kind of look the same, I could probably use something like apply, but for this one, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. So this one, padding to, I have a white text, rounded, large, well, let's just do rounded, I don't know. And then background red, 500. So now we have this nice looking button here and I could add some hover states. I don't know, maybe you, if you hover on it, it turns it to red 200, maybe darker, maybe 800. Okay, I like that a little better. So now you can easily click on it. Now these are supposed to, you can't, they're, they're disabled right here, but it doesn't look disabled. So I think we can kind of play around with that as well. So we have this button here. This hidden type is just, when we submit it with the server action, I pass this data along over. And I think what we need to do next is add some class names to this first text area. I always like my inputs to be gray, so I'll do gray. I'll put a border around it. I'll put the border gray 300, text gray 300. I'll make it small, rounded, large, padding. I don't know, three, four, maybe? Let's see. And then when it's disabled, let's do BG gray. What if we just do some really dark 800? All right, so that's way too dark. That looks weird. So maybe we do really light, like 100. Okay, I think that looks good. You can see it's very grayed out kind of looking. I can definitely play around with this, but I'm gonna leave it as is. You can see the, the normal ones are less. I think this is probably, this is normally 100. So maybe we do 300 here. Maybe we'll do the opposite. We'll do this one 100. And then we'll do the disabled 300. There we go. Maybe 200 for disabled. This is kind of not a, this is kind of a art, not a science. Okay, I like that a little bit. Now this looks a little more disabled. This one is not disabled. And then same thing for the calories. I'll probably, for the calorie part, maybe we just kind of reuse the same thing again. I don't know. I'm going to copy and paste this and see what it looks like. So yoink it, 
and then in the class name here, paste it. Okay, it looks a little different. Okay, now, now it's here. Now you can see definitely these are disabled. And then for the button, let's see, maybe we definitely don't want it red. So we don't want to probably copy and paste it. So we can add some new classes in here. I'm going to do green, maybe 300. Padding four. I always like padding and rounding everything I do. We're going to do one half width. We're going to make sure it's centered. We'll do disable, brown gray, 100. Okay, so that looks good. So these are all disabled and these aren't disabled. So normally it looks like a green background and it's here as well. It looks like these are editable. So if I added like my new lunch, ooh, the text doesn't look perfect there. I don't like the way the text is gray. Let's add in if it's disabled, the text will be that gray 100. Let's see, let's make it 300. Okay, so that's good. So now I have normal text looks normal here. And, but the, the disabled text is kind of blending in with the background a little bit. It's kind of hard to see, but it's definitely there. Also, if I refresh the page, if we look at our app and go back to their page.tsx file, every time you refresh it, it's gonna go back to that backend data, database that we have that's managed by AppSync and it should grab it. And you can see here, yep, everything's still there. So it's being saved in the background. Let's add a new lunch. Let's say I have, I don't know, a pecan pie and it's 500 calories. It looks like I have the same bug here with this estimated calories on the pecan pie. So let me change this to, so if I go here to enter calories, I just want the disabled text. Let's see here, I have background, I have the text here gray. I'm just have the disabled text be gray. There we go. And then if I delete it, type it in, looks good. Test, save it. Okay, perfect. Now that looks better. And I can always see I can delete these at any time. So this was a fun app to work on. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment below if you like this uh, type of content. If you want me to deep dive more into Amplify, AWS Amplify Gen 2, let me know. I'm trying to do a lot of content on it in the next few weeks on this channel and the AWS channel. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Bye.